Hey guys, welcome to Top Channel 101. So I found this animation on Pinterest and I thought you guys might want to know how something like this could be done inside Blender. So let's jump right into that. So doing something like this requires about four to three things. A fluid simulation, some geometry work, dynamic paint, and a displacement modifier for the inside water. So this is what I managed to do within a period of three hours. The bottle is revealed by the fluid simulation. You can see we get a splash there. And uh, depending on how you set up your fluid simulation, the glass can disappear quickly or can uh, stay there quickly. You can see when the fluid uh, disappears, then the glass also disappears. So in the original, you can see that we have droplets splashing onto the bottle from different direction and setting that up is quite easy. Uh, so you just have to set up a domain and as many sources as you want. Let me set up a new project here. Uh, you can set up as many sources as you want. I have five here from different directions. So this, this fluid is going to shoot fluids in that direction, this in that direction towards the bottle just like that. All you need is a domain to contain the fluids. Make sure that the borders are open. You don't have any collision borders because you don't want the fluid to collide on the borders and then back into the simulation. You just want it to just dissolve, just go outside the simulation. Uh, there isn't a lot to set up here. Uh, so let me just change this back to replay, just to show you. So if we play back, I start with uh, this, this first source, it shoots fluids towards the bottle. I've reduced the resolution down to uh, 32. And actually, let me turn off meshing here so that we even have uh, a faster sim simulation time. Yeah, so we have this shooting fluids towards this. And then uh, the next one I think is this. It shoots fluids towards that. And uh, uh, another one, this I think, yeah, it shoots towards that. And uh, let me set up a fourth one here to show you how you can do that. Let me just even use a cube here. Uh, make sure it's within the domain boundaries, just like this. And uh, all you have to do is give it a fluid property type flow. And uh, it should be type liquid and the geometry should be in flow so that we have fluids coming into the simulation. And uh, you can see right now, it's just shooting at the fluids towards the object. And the reason for that is because this object is set up as a force field to attract any fluids, but it's not necessary to do that. I just did that in my first experiment. It complicates the simulation when you have multiple sources. So I'll just disable it going forward. And actually, let me reset my simulation, select the domain and just change uh, a setting here. And that should, uh, you can see now this fluid is is just emitting downwards as a result of gravity. But uh, there is this option for initial velocity to set up an initial velocity for your fluid. And uh, what I'm going to do is just set up the initial velocity to go in this negative X direction. So I'll set up maybe negative 10 and we should have fluids jetting in that direction. But now we also want towards the Z up so that we can target and maybe even in the y direction so let's say uh that would be negative let's say negative 10 in the y and uh, positive 10 so that the fluid goes up as well so if we look at this now we get exactly that and you have to set up the object itself as a collider object so if i turn off the geometry nodes for a second here so i also have this set up as a collider object as a fluid object but a type effector to act as a collider so that these of these fluids ejections have something to bounce off uh, just like that and uh, you can see that this is continuously pushing fluids into the simulation we don't want that we want to time it so after this is done we can also have this eject fluid so we want it to start at around frame 23 so i can come in here and there is this use source option. If you don't have it on, uh, this object will not emit any fluids. So I want to have it off for the first 20 frames. So I can keyframe that and at frame 23, I can turn it on uh, so that it starts emitting fluids at frame 23, just like that. And I want it to stop uh, immediately, maybe after five frames. So I'll keyframe it off at a frame uh, 30 so so it's only on for about five frames so let's see perfect 
and that's what i did for all the other sources so this is just ejecting our uh, fluids in this direction and it's turning off at uh, frame frame 205 uh this here is starts start shooting at uh, around frame 50 so we should see it yeah and it stops immediately at frame 52 uh this is at frame 150 this one is at frame 100 uh, so if we let that play for a second i uh, should see that it starts emitting fluids at about yeah there we might also notice that we have some bit of slow motion in the original version so if i play back this i will see some slow motion after the fluids and uh, that is controlled via the domain itself uh, so this let me actually let me remove all the keyframes i have for the uh, for the time uh, so if i set it to one playback you can see the speed the speed is the same if you want to add some slow motion you just have to select the domain and play with the time scale so we can slow it down here to something like 0.1 just like that and uh, hold that slow motion for a few seconds and bring the bring it back to real time for the next fluid ejection and then you can slow that down again and again and again that's how you end up with that slow motion effect if you remesh this uh, turn on meshing i'm working on a course about something similar like this and uh, yeah i'll be letting you know when that comes out soon so we have that so you can see how that works now the the reveal effect is very very easy and uh, actually let's go back to the original project i'll go to uh, after you make the simulation this is uh, a more high resolution uh, simulation uh, it's actually not that high i'm just using about 124 subdivisions uh, to get uh, something that looks like that uh, in the render here you see it looks i think good enough uh it looks like fluids and uh yeah so to make to make these fluid reveal the actual object uh, the actual bottle as you can see here and uh, i think you can even see it in the viewport here so and to set that up is very very easy we're going to use geometry nodes and dynamic paint so dynamic paint make sure you have your mesh correctly uv unwrapped and uh, then set up a dynamic paint object uh, the bottle itself is supposed to be the canvas and uh, the format should be image choose your resolution and time frame and uh, the surface type should be paint uh, you can turn on dissolve if you want the fluid to dissolve later so you can see here it gets painted but as the fluid disappears uh, the mesh also starts dissolving out so you can determine how how slow or fast the dissolving happens uh, you can see in the other render i had uh, it does stay a while uh, that's because the dissolve is a bit lower and uh, but in the second one you see it's it gets it dissolves much faster than in the first one so that has to do with uh, this dissolve time setting so you can change that if you want and uh, then yeah so you set that up in the dynamic paint and uh, since this is an image sequence select where you want the image sequence to be baked uh, make sure you also have uvs that are not intersecting or overlapping and then you hit bake when you bake you will get an image sequence like this with the paint and uh, you can even preview how that looks if i turn off geometry nodes uh, this is how everything looks and i can go into the image editor into the shader editor and even take a look at that import that image sequence I can import that image sequence and just take a look at it so you can see it's creating a, a paint mask wherever the fluids touch or a weight map for every area that the fluid touches and we I, i'm just using that in geometry nodes to remove or delete geometry depending on where that fluid touches i'm using that image sequence 
importing it in as an image texture and you have to use a same time so that that image sequence changes over time and so if i take a look at the geometry i have here yeah you can see uh, this is my geometry with uh, that visualized i'm just deleting the geometry depending on this image sequence so we delete anything that is not touched by the paint so since this is animated you can see that this also grows as well but it's not smooth it's very sharp and uh, it's not thick so since we are rendering glass it wouldn't look very very good so what i'm doing here i'm coming in here and uh, just extruding it to give it some thickness i'm extruding it twice uh, so that we have double extrusion like that and joining the back side to the extruded side to have something to have a back side and a front side uh, that i merge into one mesh and uh, smooth it a bit with uh with this setup here so if you plug the position into the, the position and blur it you can soften or smoothen the mesh a bit just like that and uh, that's the results we add we get that's basically the geometry node setup it's that simple and now uh, you can check out the project files links are going to be in the description if you want to do that all we have to do is now set up the material which is a simple glass uh, shader uh, just like this with uh, the logo and uh, that's it you all, all you have to do is set up the cameras as you want and uh, you can see our reveal uh, if i combine that with the fluids itself uh, it just looks great and then for uh, this here for the internal fluid uh, i just have this mesh uh, that i animate uh, let me first turn off here using hooks so i hook this mesh here and animate it moving up to hook any any part of the mesh say uh, this i can you can just select those faces and then use ctrl h hook new object and uh, then you can move them uh, just like that so you can move this up and down uh, that's what i'm doing uh, for this part here to move up just like that to make it look like water filling in at the bottle and uh, to make it like water i add a displacement texture that works only on the top faces and uh, it's only displacing the geometry in the z direction normally by default it displaces everything in the normal direction but it doesn't look very good here so i change that to the z direction uh, so that it's displacing things in the z direction and uh, yeah so i animate the noise a bit to make it look like a waves so i get something like that and uh, that's what we end up with in the animation so as that fluid is ri rising we get uh, that reveal and uh, then the final thing anyway so that's how you get something like that if you want to check out the project files links are going to be in the description see you in the next video